The Gaza Strip is in crisis. The ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas has devastated the region. Civilians are bearing the brunt of the violence. Hospitals are overwhelmed and essential supplies are dwindling. The situation is dire with many fearing a complete collapse of basic services. The international community watches with growing concern as the humanitarian crisis deepens. The conflict now in its second week shows no signs of abating. Both sides remain entrenched in their positions. Israel insists on dismantling Hamas's military infrastructure. Hamas in turn, vows to continue its resistance against the Israeli occupation. Caught in the middle are millions of Gazans facing unimaginable hardship. The United Nations has issued urgent appeals for a ceasefire. They warn of a looming catastrophe if the fighting continues. Aid agencies are struggling to deliver essential supplies. The blockade of Gaza has severely restricted the flow of food, water, and medicine. The situation demands immediate international attention and action. The severity of Israel's blockade has sparked a heated debate. Some analysts argue Israel is employing a surrender or starve strategy. This tactic, they claim, aims to pressure Hamas into submission through deprivation. By restricting essential supplies Israel hopes to erode civilian support for Hamas and force its capitulation. Critics condemn this approach as inhumane and counterproductive. They argue it amounts to collective punishment of the Palestinian population. Furthermore, they contend that such a strategy is unlikely to succeed. Instead of weakening Hamas's resolve, it could further radicalize the population and solidify their resistance. Israel vehemently denies these accusations. It maintains that its actions are solely directed at neutralizing Hamas's military threat. The blockade, it insists, is necessary to prevent the smuggling of weapons and materials used for attacks against Israel. Israel points to Hamas's use of human shields and their practice of launching rockets from civilian areas as justification for its military operations. Distinguishing between combatants and civilians in such a complex environment, Israel argues, is a significant challenge. Israel justifies its actions in Gaza by citing its right to self-defense. It points to the constant threat of rocket fire from Hamas as the primary motivation for its military response. Hamas's indiscriminate targeting of Israeli civilians, they argue, necessitates a firm and unwavering response. Furthermore, Israel highlights the danger posed by Hamas's network of tunnels. These tunnels, they claim, are used to infiltrate Israel and carry out attacks. Destroying these tunnels, Israel insists, is crucial to safeguarding its citizens and preventing future attacks. Israel also expresses concern over Hamas's relationship with Iran. Iran, a staunch opponent of Israel, provides Hamas with financial and military support. Israel views Hamas as a proxy for Iran, a dangerous terrorist organization determined to destroy the Jewish state. They argue that any concession to Hamas would be interpreted as a victory for Iran and would embolden other hostile actors in the region. Israel insists that its actions are not only about self-defense but also about maintaining regional stability and preventing a wider conflict. The human cost of conflict is the most tragic aspect. Hundreds of Palestinians, many civilians have lost their lives, thousands more are injured, overwhelming Gaza's healthcare system. The psychological impact is immeasurable. Fear, displacement and loss have scarred Gaza's people. This trauma will haunt generations. Destroyed infrastructure worsens the crisis. Power outages disrupt essential services. Hospitals struggle with limited resources. The humanitarian situation is dire. The plight of children is particularly concerning. Schools are closed, depriving children of education. Many children need immediate psychosocial support. The international community must prioritize protecting children. The international community has responded to the escalating crisis with condemnation and calls for restraint. The United Nations urges both sides to de-escalate and protect civilians. They stress the need for a humanitarian corridor for aid. The U.S. supports Israel's defense but urges restraint to minimize civilian casualties. Calls for a ceasefire and return to negotiations continue. European countries emphasize a political solution. Egypt and Qatar engage in mediation efforts, yet these efforts have seen limited success. Deep mistrust and complex politics challenge a lasting solution. The conflict in Gaza has broader implications for the volatile Middle East. The possibility of the conflict spilling over into neighboring countries is a serious concern. The recent exchange of fire between Israel and Hezbollah underscores the interconnectedness of conflicts. 
The conflict has inflamed tensions between Israel and its Arab neighbors. Protests have erupted in Jordan, Egypt and other countries, condemning Israel's actions. These protests highlight the deep-seated anger over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The international community must work towards a lasting peace agreement, 